Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Dave's Faves. And today we're talking about Schoenberg's Pierrot Lunaire. Oh, I love Pierrot Lunaire. You love it, but that doesn't mean you listen to it every day. It's one of those pieces. Pierrot Lunaire was, uh, it's impossible to describe. Here it is, right here. Um, this is the recording that I, I, I fell in love with and still love. It's with Jan de Gaetani and the Contemporary Chamber Ensemble under Arthur Weisberg. It's coupled with The Book of the Hanging Gardens, the song cycle with Gaetani and Gilbert Kalish, 15 poems by Stefan Georg. And uh, the, the actual, the song cycle, The Book of the Hanging Gardens is tougher to listen to than, than Piero Lunaire, even though Piero Lunaire is quite a bit later. It's from 1912. The Book of the Hanging Gardens is from 1908. But these two, this, first of all, the performances here are just impossibly wonderful. We all, we all know and love Jan de Gaetani, who was a phenomenal contemporary music singer. She not only had amazing pitch, but she also had an amazing voice. <laughs> and you don't always get that with singers who specialize in contemporary music. Um, and Pierre Lunaire is for a chamber ensemble. I mean, let me see if I, they have the list here. It's like piano and flute and clarinet and some other things. Let me see if they tell you. Oh, here we go. Yes, piano, flute, piccolo, clarinet and bass clarinet, violin, viola, and cello. And it's organized in, in three groups of seven, right? Because there's like, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 10, 11, 12, 21. Yeah. It's opus, it's his opus 21, and it has 21 sections and in three parts, and it's all very mystical and, and numerological and, you know, Gematria-like, you know, I mean, Talmudic in the way that Schoenberg organizes it. And the poems are just creepy beyond belief, spooky and weird, and the musical settings are just as spooky and weird. They are atonal. They were originally designed for the performers to be like behind a screen, you know, so that you couldn't see what the instruments were doing. And then the reciter comes out and recites these poems. But they don't really recite. It's in Sprechstimme, which is sung speech. It would be like if I were talking like this, and then you're sort of at pitch, but not really. And sometimes you sing the notes, and sometimes you speak them. It goes like that. Well, better than that. I mean, not, you know, you get a sense of it. There has never been anything like it. There really is it's a piece of complete, utter, total originality from first note to last. The, the idiom, the musical idiom is free atonality, which allows Schoenberg to do whatever he wants <laughs> at any point um, to write things that have suggestions of tunes, but also to ignore them completely. Um, to use as much dissonance or consonance as he wants. It, 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 is, it is the most sui generis piece of music in like the entire universe. And it, it, it revolutionized music in a way. It was more than the 12-tone system and all that. This was the piece that set music free. And it did it in a way that was so scary, even to Schoenberg, that he later invented the 12-tone system to try and bring order into the chaos. Because you, you can't write a piece in the style of Piero Lunaire without having actual an actual text, without explaining what it is. Because otherwise, it, just, it, it would just have sounded like nonsense, but it doesn't. It's extremely carefully organized and beautifully structured and, and gripping, unbelievably gripping if you follow the words. I mean, where are the words here? I, I mean, they're here in the booklet. And I have to say something about some of the words because, oh, here we go. Oh, here's a one. Gallows ditty. The dry wood whore with rope long neck will be my, the last lover to hold him tight. She sticks in his brain like a hammered in nail. The wood dry whore with the rope long neck. Pine tree scrawny with hank of hair, the lecher she'll grab, the wretch's neck, the wood dry whore. Well, isn't that charming? Now, what, I just picked that at random. I mean, I just like opened it and you saw you saw me, right? Uh, what on earth do you think would be an appropriate musical setting for that text? This is it. Piero Lunaire. I mean, that's the kind of thing. I like the one, the black moths covered the moon. Oh my God, it's wonderful. The poetry is so evocative 
and so demented in its imagery. And to come up with a, a musical equivalent of that, with something that just enhances that poetry. I mean, you, you, you literally, I, you wouldn't ever want to read this poetry by itself, but with the music behind it, they, they're inseparable. They're absolutely inseparable. It's one of the, the great works of genius, and almost everyone who heard it back in the day when it was first written um, in 1912, can you imagine, you know, the year after Mahler's death, this thing shows up. It was as revolutionary as Stravinsky's Rite of Spring, I think, frankly, even more so in many ways, uh, and, and composers were just aghast, both in horror and admiration with for the genius that is Piero Lunaire. So here is the recording that I, I just love, but there are other wonderful ones too. Just get it and listen to it. Give it a shot, you know, in bits, maybe not all at once. I mean, it's not terribly long, it's 34 minutes, but it has a lot of meat on its bones, shall we say. But you have to follow the words and what an extraordinary piece of music it is. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.